Hey, let us talk about mythology again, and this time again, let us delve even further into our grim journey. But as always, before we are getting started, please like this video and subscribe, and if possible, also share this video as well. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Beginning with the Morrigan, often referred to as the Phantom Queen, is one of the most enigmatic and powerful deities in Celtic mythology. Associated with war, fate, and sovereignty, she is a figure of both protection and destruction, embodying the dualities of life and death. The Morrigan's presence on the battlefield, often portrayed as a crow or raven, signifies her role as a harbinger of death, but also as a guardian of the barriers, influencing the outcome of war. Her ability to transform into a crow or raven allows her to fly over battlefields, as she can be seen either instigating the fight or perching on the shoulders of those destined to die. This transformation underscores her connection to the other world and her ability to reverse between the realms of the living and the dead, reinforcing her role as a guide of souls. Here again we have the guidance and the guardians as well as the diversion between different worlds. The Morrigan is not a single entity though, but is often described as a trio of sisters, there we have our trinity, which includes Bad, Matcha, and sometimes Nemain, or an ant. This triadic nature allows her to present various aspects of battle, from the fury and the chaos of conflict represented by Babs, to the sovereignty and protection of the land represented by Matcha. Now, in Welsh mythology, Aaron holds a distinctive position as the god of the dead and the ruler of Anun, a mystical and enigmatic realm often associated with peace and, of course, eternal rest rather than torment. Similar to the Norse mythology with the underworld of hell, his domain is depicted as a paradisical land abundant in food and without sickness or old age, reflecting a nuanced perception of the afterlife that emphasizes continuity and comfort rather than fear and punishment. Aaron's rulership over Anun is marked by fairness and honor. He is a master of magic and a keeper of any magical creatures, including his famous pack of white, red-eared Hounds, there we have it again, hounds, common traits. These hounds, known for their hunting howls, roam the skies only during autumn and winter, hinting at Aaron's control over the seasonal cycles and his connection to the natural world. And here we have another hint to the Greek mythology, where Demeter is also responsibility for the winter and has some connection to the underworld due to the abduction from Hades of Persephone. Anyway, Aaron is not only a guide of souls, there again, soul guide, from the physical world to Anun, but also a figure of retribution for moral transgressions. It is said that those who meet him are judged, and those found wanting are subjected to his corrections. However, these aspects are hampered by his role as a protector of the dead, there again a guardian, ensuring that they find peace and resolution in his realm. Now, let's go back a bit and change the domain once more to Mesopotamian. Eresh Kigal, in a pantheon of Mesopotamian deities, reigns supreme over the underworld known as Yerkala, as the queen of the great below, her dominion is characterized by its dark and inexorable nature, 
around where all souls, regardless of their earthly deeds, descend upon death. Here again, a hint to the Greek mythology and the underworld ruled by Hades. Her authority is absolute, making her one of the most respected and feared gods in Mesopotamian mythology. Her story is most vividly recounted in the myths of Inanna's descent to the underworld, where Eresh Kikal plays a pivotal role. When Inanna proceeds over trial and eventual death, this myth highlights Eresh Kikal's dual nature. Though she is a strict and implacable ruler, she also upholds the laws of her domain with fairness and necessity. Erekish Gal's realm is not merely a place of darkness and decay, but also a site of transformation and renewal. It is under her stern governance that the dead are given their due respect and the cosmic balance between life and death is maintained. Here again, another hint to not only Greek but also Japanese mythology with the balance of life and death. Her realm is essential. But the underworld is also a place of gestation, where the waters of life are born. And thus, she is indirectly connected to the fertility of the earth. Nergal is a prominent deity in ancient Mesopotamian religion, embodying the destructive forces of plague and war, known for his fierce nature and formidable powers. He is also the consort of Erish Kigal the queen of the underworld, which positions him as a ruler in the realm of the dead. Nergal's dual aspects as both a god of war and a god of disease highlight his role in upholding the balance between life and death. His influence extends beyond mere destruction, serving as a necessary force that enforces the end of life cycles thereby maintaining, of course, the aforementioned cosmic order. Nergal is often depicted wielding a mace or a sword, signifying his very aspects, and sometimes accompanied by symbols of death, like lions or flames, underscoring his connection to both war and pestilence. For his actions and attributes, Nergal represents the harsh but essential sides of existence, reminding adherents of the inevitability of death and the importance of respecting the divine forces that govern it. Venture with me into the shadowy realms of ontology where hidden connections and forbidden knowledge await. Together, we will uncover the dark secrets that lie beneath the surface of these ancient tales, revealing that there is much more to mythology than mere stories, and there are profound truths waiting to be discovered. So, join me on this journey, and let's explore the mysteries together. Thanks for watching.